This opening segment, once again, we wade into the issue of Measure G, the fracking and oil well issue, but with a different perspective. Hope for Peace is here. She produced, directed, wrote, and edited a documentary called Blowout. Who's next? It's going to be screened tonight here in San Luis Obispo. Here she is. Hey, Hope, how are you? Very good. How are you doing? I'm all right. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming, and congratulations on the documentary. Thank you so much for having me. So let's start with tonight. What's happening 7 o'clock at the Ludwig Center on Santa Rosa? So we're having a wonderful showing of the new film, Blowout. Who's next? This is the only the second time it's been seen in public. We had our preview premiere uh, last Tuesday in Chatsworth, and it had a wonderful reception. It was a packed crowd. Talk a little bit about your background and what prompted you to make Blowout. Well, I've been researching fracking-related pollution cases for more than four years across the country. I've been in many, many states and some of the biggest um, pollution cases that we've had related to fracking. And if you ever hear the gas or oil industry say there's never been one case of water pollution related to fracking, um, know that they're pulling your leg. They're pulling a little fast one on you. So their definition of fracking is just one part of one stage of the process. And it's probably true that even that stage has polluted drinking water. But by defining it that way, they pretend that all of the other water pollution that's caused by um, stray gas migration or different parts of the production process never happened. And so it's a common talking point. Please don't fall for it. I've sat at, at tables with families who've had their lives ruined when their water supply was destroyed by nearby fracking. But I hope you know the argument here in San Luis Obispo County, you can't frack. There's no fracking. I've the, heard this. The, the land won't support I've it. I've heard this. So why are we concerned? I've heard also that there is a study showing that in the future, they, they say that there's no fracking now, and they say there's no fracking planned. But that doesn't mean there's no fracking possible. And the possible places to frack happen to be Montaña de Oro and near Morro Bay. Uh, and so they're very slippery with their semantics. And so there may be none now and there may be none planned, but there is fracking possible here. And you want to watch out for that. What do you make of this David versus Goliath battle? On one hand, you've got big oil in this county alone spending upwards of $8 million to defeat the measure. I think Charles Verney said Sunday night they've raised like 200000 for the yes. So two hundred thousand right. dollars versus eight million dollars. Absolutely, that is the war that we see with every municipality, town, county that tries to ban fracking. It's it's not a situation where we're actually able to decide as the people what happens in our community, because this huge influx of money will come in. Um, they'll use deceptive marketing, um, and it's extremely convincing. And so with Chevron, gave $4 million total, I believe I saw here. They do that in every town. They throw a lot of money at it. They use de- deceptive language. And then they also try to make it confusing about whether or not you're supposed to vote yes or no. The reason for that's obvious. It's their bottom line, and that's all they really want to protect. Have the oil companies come after you because you made blowout? Who's next? They haven't found me yet, okay. but I have been just in the in the. I've been making shorts, short films for the last four years, and I I have been called a stalker. I've been demonized, and yeah, they they love to just it's the it's just the basic shoot shoot, shoot the messenger tactic. Because we were both there Sunday night with the uh, director of Gasland, sure, Josh Fox, and Josh went into great detail about the reaction his documentary got, and it sounded. Pretty intimidating. Actually, that's an interesting point because the, his documentary, which was Gasland, had a, the industry put out a, 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 a sort of a refutation called Frack Nation. Yeah. And that's actually how I got into this story. I was researching AstroTurf at the time. I was not an environmental activist. And I could see right away that Frack Nation was just a propaganda film. Yeah. Basically, the idea behind it was to call all of these victims, who really are real victims, liars and frauds. And that's what the film does. It says that the the pollution victims endemic are just making this up. They just want to get a lot of money from an oil company. Their water was always like that. It's a shameful, shameful lie. And I did watch them, uh, the way that they smear Josh. And I I expect that myself. I'm ready. I've got my seatbelt on. So how do you approach I know nothing about documentary filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Do you start with a point of view and then go out and make the movie? Or do you go out and investigate and the point of view emerges over time? I don't know how most people do it. I know how this film came about. This film came about 
really literally because I, I looked at Frack Nation and I saw this claim that these people are all lying. I said, all right, let's go see. And they will let you in. They would let you in the front door at that time. And I have sat at the table of many of the largest pollution cases in the country. And it's heartbreaking. It's just heartbreaking the way that these victims will initially, uh, you're going to go do laundry and you open the lid and your water's black just all of the sudden. Or you go to get a glass of water and it's as black as coffee. That's a horrific ruination because now your home has no water source. So you really lose your property value and no one's going to want to purchase that home. And so the, the degradation that I continued to see in case after case after case after case, that's what drove me to make this film. I came across these stories that had to be told. And and that's that's how this film came about. And yet Governor Jerry Brown won't ban fracking. He supports fracking, apparently. He, he's, uh, how, do you, he, how do you reconcile that? I don't. I don't reconcile that. But I see that in, in many of our um, left-leaning leaders, that they're um, very interested in climate change, um, but they're very interested in making sure that we stay on this fossil fuel. The, the, I think, the, for me, after this research, I think the way that came about is initially when... Um, uh, the fracking boom kind of was getting off the ground. There was this promise that it was going to be a bridge fuel to a renewable future. Mm -hmm. And there is the fact that upon combustion, natural gas does emit less greenhouse gases. But that's not including the methane leakage rate during production. So industry just kind of says, oh, you know, this is going to be a great thing. It's the bridge fuel to the future. We're going to save on emissions. And I think everybody fell for it. I think Barack Obama fell for it. I think Jerry Brown fell for it. And at this point, we can see it's just a whole big pile of hooey. Hope for Peace on this broadcast. She is the producer, director, editor, and writer of the documentary Blowout, Who's Next? 7 o'clock tonight at the Ludwig Community Center right there on Santa Rosa here in San Luis Obispo. It's free, but you're always welcome donations. Absolutely. And donations tonight and going forward as we have these showings, the groups that put on the showings get to keep 20% of the proceeds, but the rest of the proceeds go to the victims that you see in the film. And so where is it? To, the, where is it the worst? What's, what's the worst fracking example worst? that you came across? Um, I, I, okay. I could say that I came across, but I can't say that this is the worst because okay, there's so the, many cases that yeah. I don't know about. I would say the case in Dimmick, Pennsylvania was the worst because it was the largest and that uh, that I know of. Wow. Uh, uh, more than 20 families lost their water supply. But the attack on the victims by the operator, uh, Cabin Oil and Gas, was horrific. They started um, campaigns in, in town and they started groups to call these real victims liars and frauds. Fake and, news. Yeah, fake news. They put out yeah. a little bit of fake news. Yeah. Um, but... It, to be honest, um, the, you know, there's the initial harm of losing your water, but there's the second harm that you go to trying to get restitution from these operators. And I've never seen a case where an operator polluted someone, they admitted they did it, and then they made it right with that person. I've never seen it. So did the state of Pennsylvania change anything about fracking as a result of this case? No, oh, you know, regulatory capture is a real weenie. Um, I, I wouldn't say so. P Pennsylvania did a little better than Texas. Right. They did try to hold this operator, you know, their feet to the fire at the time, but they really got run over. Everybody gets run over by the gas and oil industry. It's, it's, it's hard to imagine this, but from my perspective at this time, they kind of run things pretty much. Uh, we think, you know, we have we the people uh, behind they, it all. What are they running? Uh all our decisions about regulation, our decisions about how we're moving forward, um, how how these victims are treated. So then what impact do you think blowout who's next is going to make? You're another David versus Goliath. Or I am. I am such a little Deva teeny, weeny, tiny yeah. <laughs> Davida yeah. versus uh, uh, Goliath. Um, here's my goal. And, and, and we'll try this out. We'll see if one person can do this, because I'm a pretty small show here. I mean, I do have, you know, a couple credits in the film, but it's mostly me. Can we change the national conversation? That's the question. And people work on different parts of, you know, the climate change movement. And some people do local things, and that's great, and that's just as important. But my role is to change the national conversation. Here's what's happening as far as I can tell. We're all participating in the potential ruination of the human species. 
But many, 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 many of us don't really realize that. We don't speak loudly enough to the broader audience, I think. And that's really what this film is about. Um, at the very least, if we're in a situation where we really are going to cause a ruination down the road, people need to know that. I should also point out you have the actor James Cromwell as your narrator. Yes. Good job there. He did fabulous, too. He's a wonderful narrator. How did you make the connection? Well, he is a, a, a fabulous activist. We don't hear about him as much out here on the, on the West Coast. But he uh, was actually arrested he, he, um, in New York State protesting. I believe it was Cove Point that they're working on. I hope I, I got that right. Um, well, it's so another there, reason because he's very popular at our local film festival. He should be. He's it's, a wonderful person. All right. Hope yeah. for peace on this broadcast blowout. Who's next? Is mm-hmm. yeah, Give us an overview of the documentary. What do you cover? Who do you talk to? Sure. You bet. Well, the basic premise is we have one million gas and oil wells planned to be uh, drilled and fracked across the country over the next 10 years. We're ramping this up because we're expecting a 45 percent increase in natural gas use globally. And what they want to do is feed the export terminals. So what we're going to be doing, what we're actually doing right now is we're launching the global methane industry because fracked gas is 95 percent methane. And so we're looking at a million gas and oil wells fracked across across the country, plus compressor stations, dehydration station, dehydration stations, compressed gas stations, export terminals, pipelines. All of that is going to be going into America's backyard. So basically, we're kind of warning people, if you're not aware of what happens when that goes wrong, you should see this film. And what's because, and what's, mm-hmm. the, what's the attraction of fracking to industry? Is it cheaper? Is it more efficient? Why are they fracking? They're fracking because they can no longer suck any gas or oil out of the ground conventionally okay. in large quantities. And so they came up with fracking, you know, kind of in the late 90s. It started being used heavily commercially in about the mid-2000s. And no, it's not financially expedient in any way. It's extremely expensive comparatively to the way that we were extracting gas. You need the oil price to stay very high enable to enable them to make profits from this and in fact um, if you read around the industry isn't even actually turning a profit yet so the the whole idea is is somewhat preposterous is there fracking in other countries or are we the only one oh no you bet there's shale all over the globe many countries um, have shale deposits and many countries may join in and start fracking we have no idea what their leakage rates would be because the leakage rate is the real key Yes, natural gas burns more cleanly at at combustion. That's true. But there is a leakage rate between production and consumption. And so that's the production leakage rate. If that leakage rate is over 2.3%, natural gas is worse than coal for the climate. Many, many studies find leakage rates of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10%. And what would those leakage rates be in a country like Algeria? Iran. Who knows? What is the regulation like there? Are there, are there protests in other countries? Oh, you, the U.K. particularly okay. has been fighting it. They just uh, ramped up their first fracked uh, gas well in the U.K., and they had so many earthquakes they had to shut it down. Hope for peace on this broadcast. Is there a website for this, Hope? You bet. That is at blowoutthefilm.tv. That's blowoutthefilm, all one word. TV. If Measure G gets defeated, what are you afraid is going to happen on the Central Coast? Do you see fracking coming here? Here's exactly what I'll tell you. They will frack wherever they want. Um, they are not interested in having setbacks. If they want to frack next to where you hike, they're going to frack there. If they want to frack in Montaña de Oro, they'll figure out a way to frack there. It's all about money. That's all it's about. Communities are thrown under the bus. We as the people thrown under the bus. Uh, yes, there is a future for fracking here if there is shale. Absolutely. One last time on the website, please. Sure. Blowoutthefilm.tv. That's blowoutthefilm, all one word, dot TV. Come by tonight, 7 o'clock, Ledwick Community Center on uh, Santa Rosa Street in San Luis Obispo. See the documentary, Meet Hope, do a Q&A afterwards, make a donation if you're so inclined. Final thought? Come and see us tonight and watch out for fracking. It is coming. All right, Hope, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Off we go. News, traffic, weather, more of Hometown Radio still to come. This is the Dave Congleton Show.